Welcome to the remake of my lighting tutorial. This is part one of two. The first part is done on the actual lighting. The second part is done on effects as glows and dust motes, which are little particles that float. Those will all be done in part two. Um, the first thing I want to do is the light environment, which is basically your sun. So, the sun does, it casts a glow on the world and lights it. And how this works is, to, ha to have the light environment work, you have to have a skybox surrounding your map. This can be found in um, tools slash tools skybox. And you just put this wherever the sun will come in, you seal your map with it. It's pretty much the all around texture use. You pretty much get the hang of using it right from the bat. To create a light environment, which uses the skybox, you create an entity and you type in light underscore environment. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. You just kind of throw it up somewhere and then you choose your brightness which of course is your color and I usually do an orange and then this last number here which is your actual brightness of how bright it is I usually do 350 it goes red green blue brightness and then usually what I do I choose if I want my sun to come down at like this angle or from the side angle over here and then I throw my sun approximately where it would be on the skybox up in a corner and then I go to pitch yaw roll and click point at and select an area with the crosshair of where I want it to point then after it's pointed it doesn't really matter where it's located because the light from a light environment comes from all the skybox textures it's it's always coming from them so you can just throw that back down where, wherever you want and now we're gonna do a normal light and for this, you create just a new entity and name it Light. Again, choose your brightness. And then your last number. And then put it somewhere. And with this, there are a couple of uh, things that you can change with. Of course, the brightness is a very good one. Or you can have a custom fall-off distance, which this is the 50% fall-off distance, where you can change how how far it will go, the light will radiate until it hits 50%, and then there's the 0%. And these can be adjusted by these circles after you put in a numeric value. If you leave it as 0, it will not use this value at all, and it will just, um, the rendering engine will decide what it wants to do. And there's a maximum distance, which you can change. It is in inches, so it's kind of fickle to use. And how this works is it's like a normal light bulb. It radiates light in every direction around it, which is pretty much, this is the main one that you'll use. And the last one here is going to be a light under, underscore spot. And light underscore spot, the one thing we notice with this right away is that it has glows coming from it. And these glows are where the light actually goes. It's pretty simple to figure out. Um, that's pretty much how that one works. It just it only points at to where it is. So after you choose your brightness, which I'm going to make mine red, and then usually since you only use this as a spotlight, you kind of want it bright, unless you want it like a dim maybe street corner light. Then choose where you want to point it at. After you get that done, then you can choose the fall off distance again. And you'll see inner fading angle, I mean inner bright angle and outer fading angle. These decide what these, what the, the glows, like where the light actually goes. The smaller the number on the outer, the tighter the spotlight gets. Like that's a more focused spotlight. And the inner bright, if you make this smaller too, it becomes a more focused spotlight. And you can kind of see on the inside of what it's doing. Like that one will be very, very concentrated. But I'm going to leave mine as kind of like good old spotlight, just normal spotlight. That's pretty much it for this, for the actual creating the entities. But there is one more thing that needs to be done. When you go to compile your map, after you save it, you're presented with this menu as normal, and you have the options. Most people just click that, and then they just compile with BSP because it compiles super fast. But now you have lighting in, which it needs more to compile with. So usually you want Vivas on, because that helps. It's the rendering engine. It's good to have on. It will take longer to compile with it, but just leave it on. And you want Run Rad. What Rad does is, this is what, like, it renders the lighting, pre-renders it. 
So you want this left on normal. If you're going to test a map, it's fine to do it on fast for both of these. But if for a final compile before you release, always do it on normal. And I'm going to compile this, and then I'll see you in Counter-Strike. And now we're in Counter-Strike. If we go and load up our map, we'll notice that we have our blue light that radiates in every direction around where it was, and then the red spotlight that is only coming from the area that it was given onto the specified material. So it's only coming from where it's told to. This blue light just radiates from everywhere. And you notice that you get very bright when you're right on the entity, as you can see from my hands here. Um, and then when you go outside, you see the light environment is actually... It, it, you don't see it because it's an effect that will be covered in the next tutorial. But the shadows are cast from the angle that we gave it, from the downward angle. And even on these boxes, it shows it. So I hope this tutorial helped you along with your lighting, and I hope that you stick around for part two to give your lighting the effects that makes it look super duper realistic.